Hey guys, Eric O here. We're back. It's a new day. I did come in a little bit early today. This Sonata has uh, got me doing a little bit of thinking. And uh, first of all, I need to redeem myself. I know I got uh, busted pretty bad yesterday with the uh, not knowing why the uh, short-term fuel trim was, was running so negative. I just sometimes shoot a, a live video. I don't get a chance to gather my thoughts and I just start talking and uh, you know sort of working it out before I said anything but anyhow you know a lot of you commented and you know and everybody's right you know if I took the you know long-term fuel trim short-term fuel trim you know subtract one from the other and then we get our total fuel trim I just wasn't thinking typically you know you replace an O2 sensor or something along those lines you go in and you know you clear the coats and everything starts back at zero so uh, in this case, I did. I just threw the O2 sensor and fired it up. You know, naturally, the long-term fuel trim's way off the chart, but I didn't have that PID displayed, so I just didn't get that visual clue right off. And, well, frankly, at the end of the day, my mind wasn't working well. So, anyhow, when I was posting the video, I was just thinking, I, ah, I should probably edit that part out, but it's fine. We're only human, so everybody's going to make a mistake. Car still sits outside. It's nowhere as near as cold today as it was yesterday. It's, it's about, I don't know, it's like eight or nine degrees or something when I came down this morning. So pretty hot out. Uh, but, you know, you know as well as I do that, you know, the sub zero weather really wasn't making that extended crank. Uh, I've got a couple thoughts on that. Um, you know, I was talking to, you know, a lot of you guys online. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ideas floating around out there. Yeah, the O2 sensor has nothing to do with it. That was just a problem. Uh, you know, which needed to be fixed anyway, so went ahead and fixed that. My suspicion is, uh, like some of you were thinking too, is, is fuel delivery. Um, you know, when you, when you shut it off, is the fuel draining back in the tank overnight? You know, I don't know. I'd really like to go out there and just cycle the key three or four times and, you know, see if it starts. But then that really wouldn't give us, uh, you know, a result. Oh, let me answer this phone. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, where was I? Oh yeah, so anyhow, I, I suspect, you know, fuel delivery, just because, you know, the, the second the car starts, you know, yesterday, I gotta say, it's probably the first time I've had, you know, an extended crank, um, but you know, the, if you remember right from the first video, the car was towed in with a, with a no-start condition, you know, sat overnight in the shop and, you know, miraculously started. Uh, so, you know, there, there's still that kind of plaguing me in the back of my mind, you know, what was the original cause, so, I'm gonna go out here and see. Now, back in the beginning, I did check the fuel pressure on this, and it is a it is kind of a pisser to check because there is no Schrader valve. Uh, there's supposed to be an adapter you can buy to go on the fuel rail up under the hood, which I don't have. So the easiest thing for me was to go right to the fuel pump. There's an access panel in the trunk uh, behind the back seat. So I, uh, I went right to that. And I will admit that when I had it on there, I had perfect fuel pressure. I had like 55 pounds, like good volume. You know, I took a fuel sample to see what the alcohol content was and you know, everything there was good. But when I shut it off, the gauge would slowly, slowly decay back to zero. But with that being said, I did have a leak on one of my connections, you know, a very, very small one, you know, spraying gas all over. But, uh, you know, it's kind of tight back in there and I had a lot of, you know, a lot of things, you know, hooked up to, you know, to make this work. And uh, one, of the, one of the quick connects on my fuel pressure gauge has a slight leak. So I just blame the decay on that. We're gonna go out, see how it starts this morning. If I have an extended crank, my thought is, is to uh, you know, take it around the block and you know, you know, at least warm it up. I don't wanna just shut it back off cold. I'll see, I'll give the customer a call, see if I can let it sit the rest of the day. And assuming that it's gonna start hard again, I think the smartest thing to do uh, without going back and disrupting the fuel system if if we suspect you know it's fuel draining back is to go back later on this afternoon you know perhaps late in the day and give it you know five or six key cycles uh, we'll listen to here if the fuel pump comes on you know just with the key on engine off I, I assume it does on this but you know maybe if we go out and it starts hard great we'll, we'll take it for a little zip around the block um, if it uh, doesn't start hard then I don't know, we'll just try to get later and then have to give it back, but uh, but I, I assume you probably understand what I'm saying. You guys probably done it, you know, especially with the old Chevy, uh, you know, with the spider injection, you know, you're out there flicking the key on and off bunch of time trying to get some fuel pressure to, you know, get it to start. So I would I would think that we could do that later. 
And uh, you know, if we do that and all of a sudden the thing fires right up, now we can bust out the fuel pressure gauge, try to get that sealed up really good and see if there is a decay in the, in the fuel system. And I think that's the most logical, next, you know, best logical step to take. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm going about it the wrong way, but I, I think it kind of makes sense. So I just want to keep you guys in a loop. I really don't want to give this car back until we find the root cause of the original no start, but unless it's sitting out there dead, we really don't know. So let's go see. try to start it. Yeah, I see today it started really good. <sighs> well, I really don't know what uh, oops, what your thoughts might be on that. It, it did start up really well. I mean, it, it barely cranked and started, so uh, that seems, uh, seems pretty normal to me. It is, like I say, it is quite a bit warmer out. Um, I don't know, maybe what's your thoughts on, uh, you know, with the fuel trim being so goofed up uh, from that O2 sensor and having run it and just parked it outside initially, you know, could it have been slightly flooded from the bad O2, but I don't know, I thought about that too, but realistically when we parked it with the bad O2, the O2 sensor was hot and, and was working. Uh, granted, I didn't have it running for, you know, for a very long time, you know, there's a lot of starting and stopping, but. I don't know. I th maybe what we'll do is uh, we'll just leave it. I'll take it. I'll let it warm up here. Take it for a zipper on the block. I'll park it. Um, get a hold of the customer. I know he uh, he works over here for the for the village, so he doesn't get out of work till three o'clock. It's only uh, about twenty after seven right now. We'll let the car sit and uh, come back this afternoon. If it fires right up just perfect, then it is what it is. We'll have to give it back and uh, hope it doesn't leave them <laughs> leave them stranded somewhere. So. Anyhow, I know a lot of you guys are curious. I was curious myself. Wanted to come in a bit early to to get after this thing. I hate giving these cars back that were originally came in as a no start, and all of a sudden it seemed to have a magic wand waved over them. So, well, that's that, viewers. Give me your thoughts. I know you will. <laughs> I love the uh, the interaction that we have. We got a really great uh, community here online, and a lot of a lot of really smart guys. And you guys don't let me miss a thing, especially when I goof up on something as simple as fuel trim. So, but I don't know. I do the same thing. Uh, <laughs> so, thanks for watching.